Is my pension enough? Is probably one of the biggest questions I get asked for people looking to retire in the Philippines. I will be honest with you, the levels that people live in the Philippines are from here to here. This being about ten thousand dollars, this being about five hundred. Um, the five hundred bracket. In the five hundred bracket, you're unlikely to have medical insurance. You're unlikely to have an emergency cash. Um, what do you call it? Cash backup. You know, like in a bank account or something. And you're unlikely to have ongoing generating cash. Sometimes. Over a period of time, they develop though. Uh, for example, if they marry somebody that already has a small business, but the reality is, financially, it's quite strained. Um, you're in a very high risk bracket of something happening. Uh, for example, if you had a car accident, if you had a motorbike crash, if you um, got quite sick or something, you're going to struggle to pay medical bills and things like that. So, at five hundred dollars, it's a bit of a strain. When you get to about a thousand dollars, which is currently forty-seven thousand pesos, things get a lot easier. Um, for the for a start, your cost of living is a couple. I would estimate for the average couple, without overspending, eating out all the time, it's probably around twenty thousand pesos. So you can actually bank about twenty-seven thousand, or let's just say twenty thousand. But then you can also factor in things like medical insurance because you can afford to get medical insurance it's going to take you a bit of shopping around but i do recommend medical insurance for the for the obvious reasons you can also save a bit of money you can also invest a little bit of money you're a bit more relaxed on your lifestyle because you have access to more stuff because you've got a bit more cash flow um but it all comes down to how you live for example, if you go into SNR, which is a bit like a Costco, I think the Americans have, and in the UK you have Macro, and the Philippines did have Macro, but Macro was bought by uh, SNR. Uh, or was it? It was bought by SM, SM Mall, and they turned it into another one of their exactly the same stores. Um, but the the point being is, SNR is like a Costco or a Macro in the UK. Uh, it's Big, bigger quantity stuff, but also it's Western goods, imported, a bit more expensive than local produce because it's all imported. So if you're if that's where you do your shopping, your costs are going to increase quite considerably. Um, if you're shopping at Gisano, if you're shopping at uh, Robinson's Mall or um, SM Mall or something like that, it's not too bad. If you stick with local produce, it, your costs are down. Where expats are expensive, this is why when I say when I'm out the Philippines, costs drop considerably, is because I eat a lot of import, uh, imported stuff. Um, I have imported wine. I have, I eat out a lot more. We go, we go to some nice restaurants in Cebu, so we will spend up to nine thousand pesos going out for a meal. Um, but at the same time. We don't need to, it's just that we enjoy that lifestyle. But you've got to bear in mind my cost of living before I left the Philippines uh, would have been the equivalent. My income was about $10,000 a week. Um, so I've lived at that level, but I also have no issue with just rock bottom. Um, when I say rock bottom, I'm not like homeless or something. I'm talking about I don't mind eating local food, I don't mind. Uh, dealing with a lot of the health issues myself, I don't mind um, just generally pottering along on a low income. It doesn't really affect me too much because I adapt to wherever I need to. But when we have plenty of money, bank some, enjoy some, and make sure all the kids get whatever they need. So it's all about how you live. So my best advice, if you're going to the Philippines to retire, when you get there, be aware you've got an initial cost. When you get your get there, the first thing, if you're renting a place, you're going to have to put down um, three months up front for most places. That's two months deposit plus one month up front rent. You're probably going to want a TV. You're going to want cable TV as well. Uh, so you've got to buy the cable box and all that sort of stuff. Um, get the telephone line installed you may want internet so the internet may not be accessible to where you are so you may be paying more for that 
um, you're going to want some com more comfy f furniture than there is currently available. You may want some power tools and stuff to do some of the repairs around the place. You'll probably find that you want to buy a vehicle. And I recommend hanging fire on buying a vehicle till you've been there a while. If you can get around... I mean, I'll be honest with you. I commute around no problem. I don't don't mind going on a jeepney. I don't mind going in a taxi. But I just love having a motorbike. And I love having my 4x4 with full-blown air conditioning, etc. Where it's just nice. Um, but I don't need it. They are things that I enjoy. So you can get away with not having those things. The reason I say that is I would wait until you're either loving it or hating it. Um, in the sense that you love the Philippines and you want to make sure you're there long term. Or you love the Philippines but you hate commuting so you get your own vehicle. Or you hate everything and decide to leave and you've already saved some money because you didn't buy all that stuff that you didn't really need because you're not staying there long term. But the initial cost of moving in is probably going to be probably three to four months budget. Uh, so if you're earning $1,000, you're probably going to spend $4,000 um, in purchases for the house and that's your general lifestyle before you start getting to your monthly spend um, so you got that to think about is you need to put some money on up <coughs> for that initial I'm moving to a new country thing like if you do when you move house wherever you are on the planet you're normally leaving a place so you've got to get your deposit back but you've had to put the deposit down on the next place so you you're owed money but you've got money you've had to put down on the next place as well plus the move cost and all that so it's just normal transition stuff but I will say though um, you need to analyze the lifestyle you want and then adjust the budget accordingly because if you want to live in a nice condo and have all the uh, condo lifestyle of eating out every day etc you're gonna need a budget up here uh, not ten thousand, but you know, probably two to three thousand. Uh, the reason being is if it's rented, the rents vary considerably. But also, you find your electricity and other things can be a bit more expensive. So, you want your budget will be a bit more higher. Uh, but also, if you're living in somewhere like the Ayala places, you're going to the Ayala Mall to eat out every day. You're not going to the local um, street vendors. So, your cost of living will be higher. But if you can adapt to a local lifestyle, even with a condo, uh, for example, you eat rice, chicken or whatever at the local places, instead of going out and buying a coffee for 100 pesos, you can buy, um, well, you can't now, you used to be able to, you could buy an entire chicken uh, for probably about 160, 180 pesos. It used to be about 100, and, yeah, about 120 pesos a while back. But the the point is, with a chicken and some rice, that's enough to feed um, an entire family because we normally ha have like one chicken, rice between five people. So, for a meal um, for the five of us, you're only talking because the rice, rice is cheap. So, say 200 pesos for about 200 pesos, we can feed five people. But then again, like I said before, when I when I'm there, I like to eat out now because I've got I've got more disposable income, so I do that that's the things you got to look at when you get people cranking on uh, Facebook uh, sorry on YouTube that they can't afford to live on this budget they're right it's not the country it's them they cannot afford to live on that budget because they live beyond their means they should be spending down here they may not like to be eating uh, normal food or cooking uh, normal being in the sense for that region um, but at the sense, but the point is, if that's their budget, that's what they can afford. You can adapt. That's the good thing about the Philippines, is you can adapt a lot of things, um, because you haven't got things like council tax. Don't know if you have that in the U.S. But there's a lot of excess charges you get in the U.K. for your bin collection, all these bits. In the Philippines, it's pretty much non-existent most of the time. So there isn't people stacking up bills on you, um, which makes a big difference because that becomes your income to manage because you deal with the bin clearances. It's only about, I think with 
it's about 100 pesos a year or something. There's bits and pieces you pay for, but it's insignificant. But that's what makes the Philippines you, uh, pretty unique, where the UK, it wants you to... It, it, sorry, it doesn't want you. It forces you to have a lot of stuff you don't need. Um, for example, city water in the Philippines. You do not need to have water from the city at all. You can have a deep well pump for free. But in the UK, they want you to have it and force you to have it because they want to make you pay for it. Even if you have a deep well, they still want a contribution of you for water that you shouldn't even be paying for. Um, the Philippines, unique in that sense, is not trying to get you to pay for stuff that's free. Um, it's free. Uh, because obviously it's got people that are either rich at the top or virtually nothing and a lot of people in between. So as such, there's a lot more flexibility in there. So my advice to you is sit and have a hard long think what your lifestyle is now, what you're expecting in the Philippines, and then if you visit the Philippines a few times, do some comparisons. Because when you go to TGI Fridays or whatever, how much does it cost in the US to how much does it cost in the Philippines? And how often do you go in, in the US? Are you going to then start going regularly in the Philippines because you've got more spare time? Because in theory, you shouldn't actually be trying to increase how often you eat out. You should be trying to live a similar lifestyle, but instead of going to work in your retirement, you go out and do something, or you get a hobby, you do something that keeps you occupied. Um, because when you're bored, you spend a lot more money. You'll, you'll do a lot of stuff that um, you may not want to be spending money on. For example, I know I say about getting a motorbike, and a lot of people are like, whoa, I'm not riding a motorbike. The reason I like motorbikes is I can hop on it with a full tank of fuel and go for miles and miles and miles. Um, and it's very, very cheap. Extremely cheap. And that's why I like that motor transport. My a uh, car is far more expensive, it's a 3 litre turbo engine on it. Um, so the fuel costs are sort of like that. And this is what I'm saying, you need to compare what your lifestyles are. But for the average expat, if you're earning $500 a month from social security or pension, you're going to find it quite tight, but possible. It, it is possible but you've got to be aware that you need to get some sort of um, extra income to help keep the money flowing. Because with the way the exchange rates are going, um, the money has declined considerably since 2007. Just have a look yourself, analyze it yourself. Um, but also, I recommend at least trying to increase your income by 30%. You've got the spare time. Find something, something you can make money with. Um, but also, if you're in the thousand... Um, thousand dollar mark also try and just bump up towards one three one five if you can extra money is always nice and it's better to be busy as well so there's there's always opportunity all right thanks for watching